Well, hello, everybody. <clears throat> hello, everybody. Welcome to Feature Friday. We'll get started here in just a moment. It's not. It's almost six o'clock on this wonderful Friday evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Ooh wee! It has been a wild ride the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Let's see. Hi, Sandra. And let's see here. Still getting a couple more computer windows open and we'll get started. <clears throat> there. Okay. All righty. I think we are good to go. Let's see here. Get this one window open there. All righty. <laughs> Welcome everybody to Feature Friday. It's it's been a couple of weeks. As most of you know, I have been under the weather. Oh, hold on. Just a minute, Sandra. I saw one of your how to through pink metallic lace. Hmm. Sandra, I'll have to look that up to tell you which which one that was. I'm sorry. I can't pull that one out. It's just off the top of my head. That's anyway, but I will get back to you on that. I promise. We're going to have some surgery videos here soon, and you'll be able to see some more of that fun stuff. <clears throat> Hi, Gia. Hi, Janil. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Janil. It's been a rough road. I am. I am able to stay out of bed about half of the time. 50% of the time now, but all I can say is thank goodness for modern medicine <laughs> or I wouldn't be sitting here right now. <laughs> okay. Hi, SP. Hi, Jenny. Oh, thank you, Jenny. Hi, Pat. Hi, Vanessa. I can tell you, everybody, I most of you, I think most of you know, or some of you know, maybe some of you don't know, but a few years, several years back, I was in a pretty bad truck truck accident. I was rear-ended by a semi-truck and broke my neck and my back. And Well, let's just say on occasion, I have a flare-up in my back <clears throat> from that injury, and that's what had happened over the last two weeks. I've been flat on my back, swallowing muscle relaxers and pain medication, but it is getting better. I actually couldn't walk there for a while because I was having severe sciatica from the nerve. I have nerve damage, and when it flares up, it really flares up. And there's usually no warning for it whatsoever. The, when it happened, I just woke up the next morning and couldn't get out of bed. That's just how it happened. And I hadn't really done anything super strenuous the night before, the day before, so there you go. That's just part of it. I still feel pretty lucky. I can still walk and do all that kind of stuff. And Anyway, thank you so much, everybody, for your concern and well wishes and understanding. Okay, hi, Gretchen. Hi, Allison. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling much better. I still have some localized lower back pain, but at least it's not down into my legs like it had been. And let's see here. I'm going to get caught up on all my little chat windows. Hi, Patty. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. I tell you, everybody, your well wishes really has really helped keep me going there. <laughs> yes, indeed, it has. And let's see here. Hi, Terry. <clears throat> so, yes, tomorrow at 5 p.m., um, I got my schedule back up. I must, I'll be back maintaining my schedule for lots of fun, fun stuff. And I'm going to pick up where I left off on my last Friday night. If you remember, I think it was two weeks ago. Oh, it's been two weeks. Wow. Boy, how I have lost mentally I have lost time here anyway as you know a couple weeks ago I was 
I was strip piecing two and a half inch strips into units like this. And what I'm gonna and what I'm doing, these were two and a half inch stri leftover strips from various jelly rolls and fabric end cuts that I had. And what I'd like to do with those <clears throat> is there's so much you can do with them, but what I'm doing right now, I'm creating a 25 patch box to make a, a quilted throw out of. And <clears throat> I'm gonna swap to this other camera. There's two ways I like to do this. Oh, hi, Lon hi, Londa. Hi, Ernestine. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Mike and Linda. <laughs> oh, y'all y'all are wonderful. Um, let's see here. And uh, let me look at this other window here. Okay, so we're good. So I'm going to swap to another camera. And I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to do a little bit of cutting so you can see actually get a better view as to what I'm talking about. So let me move my camera. There we go. Now, as you can see, I made five different units. <clears throat> so I needed 25 strips, five strips sewn together. Okay, and then I ended up with a really more like a you can see the salvage. This was salvage to salvage, okay, from one end to the other. And the first thing I want to show you if you have AccuQuilt, let me just pull this up here for a minute. If you have AccuQuilt, this is the two and a half inch strip cutter. <clears throat> and what it is, there's a blade here, 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 and here. If you cut your, if you have yardage and you cut your two and a half inch strips using this die that passes through a machine, and I, I don't have it set up where I can actually show, show it going through the machine just yet. But what, what you'll end up with for, you'll end up with three strips. There's a strip, there's a strip, and there's a strip, okay? And what that would look like in the real life. Now, if I wanted to get, if I'd taken these strips and sewn them into my units like this, well, now I'd want to position this so that the blades would then cut this way. Since these were two and a half inch strips, I'd make two and a half inch cuts. And the way I would do this. I would line one edge up along this, this line right here so it stays square. <clears throat> and here's a, here's a blade, here's a blade, here's a blade, and here's a blade. So what that would look like, what it would cut, let me lay these out again. If I ran this through the machine, it would make these cuts in this direction. And what I would end up with after it's cut is this, okay? I would have three of these strips for each one of these layers. Let's see what I'm saying there. Pretty cool, very accurate to do it this way. <clears throat> but. And when you're doing this on AccuQuilt, you really don't want to do more than one unit of this at a time, simply because if you have more layers stacked on top of this where you've done the piecing, it'll have a tendency to shift and you will not get as accurate of a cut, okay? If you don't have AccuQuilt, and I, I have AccuQuilt, I don't always use it. I might still like to rotary cut, but to rotary cut this, let me set that to the side. Here's my units. What I have right here is a two and a half inch by 24 inch Creative Grids ruler. And I like to, if I'm gonna cut two and a half inch units, this is the ruler I like to use. Because what I would do, Just making sure you can see this on camera. 
I'm just going to line up one edge of the ruler with my cut. And then I'm just going to cut it this way right here. I can just move it off and there I have a perfectly cut unit. By strip piecing, you could cut individual two and a half inch squares and sew them together to make the block that you're gonna see what a finished block looks like tonight. But if you just strip piece it, this is what strip piecing is called, You do, all you have to do is cut strips, sew the strips together and cross cut it into these type of units and you save yourself 75% of the time and work to piece a block like that. And that, to me, that's huge. It is huge because a queen or king size quilt, if you cut out each individual square, you're going to have over 2,000 squares of fabric in that quilt. And I can tell you, you'll be tired of picking up individual two and a half inch squares long before that quilt is done. Now, what this gave me get all these stacked up here because this is the order I'm going to sew them together in. And I was going after a scrappy look with this. I'll show another method here in the near future on how to do this. Right there. <clears throat> so each one of these stacks represents one of those piece strip units like you just saw me cut up. So I had five units, one, two, three, four, five. And each one had five strips in it. So there'd be 25 strips to make one set of pieced units like this. There's enough right here for 16 blocks of 25, two and a half, 25 squares per block, enough for 16 blocks. And that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to bring these over a little closer so I can reach in from the machine. And then I'm going to actually chain piece, start chain piecing all of this yummy fun stuff together. Let me swap over here to a different camera. Move that one out of my way. Oh, wait. First, before I get started, I'm going to show you something. Oops, wrong one. Hello there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that is the, the stone log cabin quilt I finished two, two Saturdays ago. I don't know, my last uh, Quilts in Italy episode on YouTube. That was the quilt top that I just finished, all in K fabrics. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Karen. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Chris. Hi, Bill. Hi, Vicki. So, yes, yeah, so there we go. That's what I've been working on. I've got three quilts ahead of me before I can get that in my frame. Oh, wonderful, Vanessa. Wonderful. So I'm going to put, I got three quilts I got to get quilted before I can stick this top in my frame to quilt it but I'm going to attempt to do that live on camera, some of the quilting for that stone log cabin quilt. Okay. Isn't it wonderful, Vanessa, that those patterns in that book are so, so accurate. It makes a lot, it makes it fun when it comes out great like that. Oh, thank you, Jackie. Alrighty, so we're gonna get started. I'm gonna swap my camera. And what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to take these two stacks. There's approximately 16 strips in each stack. And I'm going to sew them to all together in one unit. And the great thing about strip piecing and having accurate piecing, when you look at this, I'm just going to line up the two ends. I'm not going to use any pins. But check out how perfectly that lines up. Can you see that? 
see those flaps check that out without any pinning when you strip piece and have a consistent seam line your piecing comes your piece when you go to set stuff together it is just so perfect and easy to do and i i really like it when it works out like that okay hold on i see something i got to get rid of There, I saw someone decided to post something naughty, so we just got rid of them. <laughs> oh my goodness, you never know. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna make sure my seams are being nested as I feed them under my presser foot, but they're lining up perfectly, so guess what? Don't have to worry about any pinning or anything like that. I'm going to do a couple blocks right now. I'm going to do enough for two anyway. <clears throat> but really and truly, you can see, I've never had you saw me make these these piece stripped units. I actually have never had to cut a single individual piece. And it really makes it look like like you have because once it's sewn together, nobody that you knows will know whether it's been strip pieced or not. Just gonna look at those two right there. Hi Tracy. Puffy's here somewhere. I haven't he's playing in the other room. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna open this up. And check that out. Look how perfect those four corners meet. You just saw on camera no pinning or anything. And I just really love it when it works out like that. <laughs> you gotta love it when it works out like that. Uh, Sarah, I will look at Mal into getting malware bites. But yes, also Sarah, when I erase that, I also report that to YouTube so their stuff gets some um, so their stuff gets canceled and they're not able to use an account anymore. But once again, right there, perfect piecing. It's what I call piecing the easy way. Okay, so I'm gonna do two more from the next set of strips. Now the last set of strips I did were in black and blues and I've laid them down somewhere and I can't find them. I was actually going to piece those. This is the ones that I first did, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. And all I'm doing, I'm just nesting the seam as I go. So all I'm doing, I'm using a quarter inch piecing foot with the edge guide. I do have my needle beam uh, seam guide light on. It's set to a quarter inch also. Let's do one more. And most of the strips that I have in my scraps, I've only got like maybe one or two of each fabric. So it, that way I, I consider this a completely free quilt top because it's just leftover fabric from other projects over the years. Now, if you had used one and a half inch strips instead of two and a half, you would actually end up with what's called a postage stamp quilt. The finished 
the finished size of the squares would be one inch, and that's traditionally what a postage stamp quilt is called. As you can see in that one, perfect piecing. Corners are just straight right on there. Okay. So I'm going to keep these two here out, but put these back in the order to where they'll go. And I'm going to take my fifth stack and lay it right over there because that's going to go right here like so. Look at that cute little mouse and the thimble on that fabric right there. Let's see here to get it to get in focus. And come on, focus in you. There it goes. Isn't that cute? That little mouse and a thimble. And yes, I already know how I how I'm gonna quilt this. I free motion quilt to everything for the most part. <clears throat> Unless I'm doing it on an embroidery machine. But I'm gonna do what I call my little pumpkin seed quilting design. Some people call them melons. I've always heard them called pumpkin seeds. No, Bill, I have not pressed any of, I pressed the strips right before I cut them. <clears throat> before I cut them like this, I pressed everything. You can see on the back, it's all been pressed. And then once I get my blocks made, I will press the entire block. But I did not press, um, I'm not pressing this step. But absolutely, before you try to cross cut those first units you make, you definitely want to press those so they're nice and flat. It'll, you'll get a much more accurate cut that way. And, uh, bum, bum, bum. Okay. Now then, here's our two pieces from the first two that we made. We've almost got two blocks pieced, everybody. That's how fast this goes. <clears throat> okay. So next, these will go right over here. There we go. That will go right there like that. I'm just lining up those seam lines as I go, everybody. Nesting the seams as I go. There's that one, and we'll do another one here. And what I do, <clears throat> if I have two pieces, two units, where one is wider than the other one, I'll put my largest unit on the bottom and put the, more, the shorter one on top. What I mean by that, if I go like this, I can't see the bottom piece. If I go like this, I have just have more control over it that way. Gosh, I hope that made sense. Okay. There. 
And guess what? Two blocks are now completely done. Two blocks are completely done. And this is what's called a 25 patch block because it's five squares by five squares. And as we all know, that's 25. But there we go. A 25 patch block. So, <clears throat> court, now when it comes to setting them together, <clears throat> and I'll go into that next Friday night, I'm not going to set this group of blocks together. Uh, there will be at least one other set to set them together because <clears throat> if I set these side by side, to me, that just kind of looks funky, right? So I want some... I want my next group to have a slightly different colorway so they they blend but they kind of stand out at the same time. I hope that makes sense. Okay. Pretty cool though, right? Let me check on... Okay. Oh, thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Jackie. Okay. And yeah, let's see. Vanessa, some people do. Personally, I do not starch before I cut. Now, if the fabric has been setting, it's got creases in it, well, absolutely, I'm going to cut. I'm going to press that fabric and maybe use best press on it before, before I do any cutting of yardage or anything as far as that goes, but just to run it through the Accu quilt or even under a rotary cutter and a ruler, I'm not going to specifically starch it just for that step. And there we have it. That's what I have for you tonight is right there, but we can sit on here and I'm going to piece on a few more blocks <clears throat> and we'll chit chat about some stuff if you want to. Let's see, uh, everybody, I, I am going to be start traveling again in the middle of, um, you know, the second week, I think the second week of August. Is that right? Yes, second week of August. And I'll actually be going to Jackman's Fabrics in St. Louis on August the 13th. Super excited about that. I haven't been back to that store since I actually was traveling for AccuQuilt. Super great store. Gosh, they have nice fabrics there, both quilting and garment fabric. That would be an expensive trip. I can already see that. <laughs> but yes. <clears throat> and let's see then. I am going to be... Ooh, then I'm going to Austin, Texas um, the following week. And then the week after that, the last week in August, I will be in St. Louis again for our Baby Lock Tech new product launch and all that fun stuff. Let's see. On August the 4th, everybody, I'm going to do... I don't have it scheduled just yet, but I have... I will be having a special live... To talk about the new products that are coming out this fall with Baby Lock. And that's all I can say right now on that subject, anyway. Okay. We're going to get these, all of these sewn together right here. It feels so good to be back, back, everybody. I can tell you, I was, it was rough. It's been rough. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Oh, and let's see, I have lost, um, let me think here. I've actually lost 20 pounds since June the 22nd. My last blood workup, my sugars, my glucose was high. And most of you know I'm diabetic. So I talked to my 
talked to my doctor and we both thought, and I did research on it as well, but they wanted me to try Ozempic. And I've been on Ozempic now for, let's see, this is week five. I have been on Ozempic and I've lost a little over 20 pounds so far. That is a side effect. Ozempic is actually <clears throat> for diabetics to, type two diabetics to get their A1, their glucose under control. And weight loss is a side, one of the side effects. And I can tell you, this week, every morning when I check my blood sugar, it is, it has been around 108 to 125, 130, which is amazing. It has been a long, long time since I've had blood sugar readings that low. I'm just thankful I have insurance that really helps out with that because a one month, I have to give myself a shot each week <clears throat> with that. And it's not that, it's not bad. But I can tell you, CV, I pay a $47 copay for that, that pin each month. And CVS bills my insurance company 940, I think $948 in addition to what my code is for that. And there is no generic for it, but I will tell you it works. I just got the prescription renewed and have a three month supply of it in the fridge now. Let's see here, hi Sally. Oh, wonderful, Sally. Yeah, I will be the morning of August the 13th. I will be in in uh, their St. Louis, Missouri store. And then that afternoon from 2 to 5, I will be over on the Illinois side of the river at their store over there um, in Fairview Heights, Illinois. And we, she's went ahead and uh, booked a time slot the first weekend in November for me to come back and do a shot, to do a, a workshop, so yes. So Sally, please, please come to the, the store on that's a Saturday, August the 13th is a Saturday. And you will, it is a launch party for all the new baby lock machines that are being released this, this fall, this August. It is actually a lecture demo is what it, the format of that will be. Oh, congratulations, Bill. That's awesome. That's so awesome. My goodness. <clears throat> oh yes, Ernestine, that is is the insurance is a blessing, that's for sure. With this last three month supply of that. I am like $300 away from the donut hole on my prescription part of my plan. So yeah, it's a good thing. <sighs> and then my surgery I had this January of this year, my copay, it was a, almost $15,000 and it was outpatient surgery, okay? but. My copay on that was only $275 is all I had to pay out of pocket on that one as well.
And then my donut hole coverage is, I think I have to pay tw at the most is 25% <clears throat> when, that, when I hit that donut hole thingy. But that'll only be maybe a couple months like that, so it's all good. Yes, Ernestine, if I didn't have that insurance, I would not be able to, honestly, I could not afford this stuff, that's for sure. So what I'm doing here, I'm just chaining all of these together, easy peasy. Well, Tracy, this stuff, there's no, what it is, the reason why it's as expensive as it is, there is no generic for it yet. That's the thing. Once there's a generic for it, it's not that expensive anymore. But until that happens, yeah, you are at the mercy of the pharmaceutical companies, for sure. Some of the other side effects are nausea. I've had that. Heartburn, I've had that daily. Tums takes care of that. Um, definitely loss of appetite, for sure. There can be other ones, but those are the most common ones. about the weight loss I'm really more happy about the blood sugars getting under control if it did nothing but that it would be worth it everything else is just a blessing and let's see more future travel let's see here Absolutely, Trudy. And I will be coming, let's see, the last week, right before Halloween, I will be at Flash Sewing Quilt in beautiful Naples, Florida. And then they'll have me back again in January. So I have a couple of wonderful trips planned back down to Naples. And right now, I plan on driving everywhere. It's just easier for me to... It's easier on me to be able to get out and stretch my back and stuff instead of... Um, instead... Hide user. There we go. <laughs> I find it much easier to get out and when I'm traveling, if I can, if I can drive there, I'm going to drive because of my back. I can get out and stretch and take as many breaks as I want to, whereas on an airplane, that's just not going to happen. sewn together everybody okay let's see here
Do, do, do. are all preset together. Get those cut apart. Don't know where my little gadget is, my little gypsy quilter thing where I'd be using that. I've set that down somewhere and can't find it. <laughs> it's here somewhere. <laughs> oh my goodness. But And honestly, if you have if you have time, sometimes at this stage, I would just take this to the ironing board and press it simply because it is easier to press at this stage right here. But you don't have to. It would work out perfectly as well. Notice I have the, this is a, an entire block piece. And it would just be e just as easy. And when I press it, if I wait to this stage to press, I'm going to press it from the back, okay? That way I can make sure I have all the seam lines going one way so that block lays nice and flat. And although it would take a little bit more time during this, this process, if I just went ahead and did it right now at this stage, it would, be, it would technically be easier to do at this stage. But listen, one reason I don't like to do it or tell people not to do it is one thing is you have to know how to pressing is just that press 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 it's not put the iron down and wiggle it across the top as you're you're pressing it that's then called ironing and ironing can distort the seam lines and your seams won't match up if you do that okay Snip, snip, snippy, nick snip, <laughs> snip. Now to on tomorrow's episode of my Quilts in Italy series, we're going to be we're going to be cutting fabric for this the cool zigzag quilt in that Quilts in Italy book. I'll be showing a couple of methods to do different ways to cut that stuff out. Oh no, Tracy, Puffin does not go on the road trips. Although he, as much as he would love to, I just, it would be, it would be difficult <clears throat> on a quick trip like that. And it really does stress him out if he's away from home for very long. So that wouldn't be a good thing as much as I would love to bring Puffy Puffy with me. Yeah, I don't, normally I do not do that. <clears throat> and we have those right there to get. And let me see something here, make sure I have these in the right direction. Just hold one of these up next to it. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Right here like this. Okay. I unthreaded my needle. Can anybody tell me why my needle came unthreaded? Let me 
look for those comments before I tell you why. I happen to be sewing on the Altair tonight. So here's the thing. Regardless of which machine you are, you are sewing on, you always want your needle to start in the beginning to be in fabric. If you have it forward just enough where that needle misses your fabric and it's going to try to make that first stitch in the air, it's going to unthread your needle. It'll do it almost every time. If you're ever wondering why your needle comes becomes unthreaded, 99.9% .9 chance if it's at the beginning of a scene, that is the reason. And everybody, I am working on some getting booked in some workshops in other parts of the country. And I'm not going to mention names right now, but there's a lot in the works. Lots in the works. That's right, Vanessa, 100%. You are 100% correct. That's correct, Tracy. Was not in the fabric. So another way to avoid, now once you've got it started making stitches and you're chain stitching, you can stitch in the air all you want then. It's not going to do anything. It just when you're first starting off, also applies sometimes to a serger. And the easiest way to keep that from happening, I'm going to show you. And this is a trick that we used in the sewing factories on those industrial straight stitch machines. Let me give me a scrap here. There we go. Have you some kind of starter cloth? This is a little test strip from the long arm quilt that I quilted. But all you want to do say we're just starting off what you can do is have a, a starting a starting cloth a starting leader so right here i would just this would be my scrap cloth what i'm going to use as a starting cloth i'm going to start it off and then i can just start feeding my fabric through and it'll never ever come unthreaded that way Oh, Gretchen, I'm sure I'll be back at Pins and Needles at some point. They are actually on my call list next week to call and see how they're doing. Just love that shop. I love Pins and Needles. Wonderful shop. People are super duper nice. And boy, howdy, they have some nice fabric in that shop, too. Oh, did they? I didn't. I hadn't heard if they had done that. I hadn't heard that, Gretchen. You know, a lot 
of retailers because of the pandemic had to do kind of reinvent themselves in some ways as far as their business plans because of that that supply chain stuff it's affected retailers of all sizes and companies of all sizes as well. When that happens, Gretchen, you know, I'm sure the, the that property may have been sold and the new owners didn't want to continue leasing out the building and stuff. That's usually what that means. That happens. <clears throat> yes, they do, Londa. Everybody there at Pins and Needles are so super nice. Jan and all of her all of her group. They're just really great people. And Connor and all of them. Everybody, um, I will be teaching a virtual Meridian adventure for Baby Lock. <clears throat> and if you're interested in something like that, if you own a Meridian, you can go to Baby Lock's website and look under Getaways and join in on that. That'll be a lot of fun. The first one is um, August the 9th, 10th, and 11th. Then there's another one in October, and again another one in December. Those will be repeats. It's a three-day getaway with yours truly. Exploring that machine. Hi, Sue. Oh, you're fine, Sue. No worries. got all these done here to this stage I just was looking at part of the playback on one of my monitors. I saw a bit of a vibration there. That's not the camera shake, everybody. That is actually with this with this extension table on. I can't really see it, but it does show up on the camera that vibration. 
the camera is not vibrating. It is mounted on a separate tripod. Let's try something here. I just noticed that. There we go. So I go fast is what it is. Let me turn that down to halfway. Can't really. There we go. Okay. Now you can come on off of there. Alrighty. Hi, Heather. Right, so there's all of those. Now, this time, before this, before I do any more sewing, I will press these. Hoo wee let's see. And some other places I'll be will be, I will be up in Wisconsin twice this fall and where else am I going to be uh, see so so far this fall I will be in Wisconsin I'm um, in September I'll be in Wisconsin and in Fairfield Fair, uh, Fairfield Ohio they're just north of Cincinnati and and I will be in Naples and St. Louis. I'll be in St. Louis a couple of times. Anyway, so yeah, I will have more on that next week as far as that goes. And let me, there we go. Hello there. So yes, and that's how easy it is to do strip piecing for a 25 patch block <laughs> yeah i noticed i had some repeats of strips in this one i didn't realize that until i started cutting it apart to set it together but you know what that's okay but what that did what I, what you just saw me working on here that's enough for 16 of these blocks 16 of those blocks and the finished size of these blocks, since they are two and a half inch strips, these would actually uh, measure when finished, these blocks right here, 10 inches by 10 inches. And what's really cool about that number, it's really easy to tell how many blocks you need for what size quilt top you want. For instance, if you wanted a large queen small king size top that measured 100 by 100 inches you need 100 blocks 10 by 10. <laughs> you know what i mean okay so with all of that being said i want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight thank you for hanging in there with me and let's see lsn i'm going to be in De Pere. Wisconsin. Is it De Pere? Yes, De Pere. I'll be doing in, in September. I'll be doing my Serger Quilt Camp, and then in November I'll be doing my Magic Squares workshop up there at um. Ooh, what's, yeah, I'll have to. I'll. We'll post a schedule of that next week I'll, with all the good details to that. Oh, hi, Sue. Okay. Oh, thank you, Chris. Cheryl, how do you set the seam guide to a quarter inch? Well, Cheryl, let me swap this over here. Now, what I've got on here is the digital dual feed foot. And if you notice, there's five or five over five different of these little attachments you can attach onto under here. This just happens to be the quarter inch plate. See that little flange right there? This is to do a quarter inch seam. But for the laser light, let me hold my finger under there and see that laser light right there. You're going to, on the Altera, you would set it so it's at 10 millimeters, so that it says 10 millimeters on the screen. 
hold on here. Right here it says 10 millimeters. And you do plus or minus to get it to where you want it. And, oh, wonderful, Jackie. I will see you tomorrow. Hi, Tracy. See you tomorrow as well. Hi, Lisa. Absolutely, Lisa. I just didn't recognize the LSN. Wonderful. But yes, so that's what it is. Um, my gosh, I got sidetracked here and I was trying to answer. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so Cheryl, Cheryl, all you want to do is just turn on your, your little function here and then set on the Altair or Destiny, you would set it at 10 millimeters, okay? Because on this machine, the needle at zero is all the way over to the left. So with the needle in the center position, if I lined up the, the laser light with that, it would actually say 3.5 millimeters 3.5 millimeters on the Altair has this even with your needle, okay? If I just hold down the plus sign until it says 10 millimeter, that's right on top of that quarter inch mark on my bobbin cover plate to get that set up there. Okay. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Ernestine. Thank you, Trudy. It's good to see you too, Trudy. Thank you, Tanya. Okay, everybody. Everyone have a wonderful evening. I'll see you all tomorrow night at 5. Thank you. Bye now. Wait a minute. There we go. Had to have the face cam on. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Okay. Leave the chapter over.